We continue with part three, and this is kind of an interesting uh, uh, parallel that I, I found uh, just by doing this lecture. We have this wonderful painting from 1878, the orange trees, uh, and then we, I, I didn't notice this at first, but we have a very similar composition that he did uh, kind of earlier showing his extended family. Uh, and, and again, when we think about Gustav Kaibot in, in the year 1878, this is uh, the year that his mother passes on and, and uh, he essentially inherits the, the family uh, the brothers, if you will, kind of inherit the rest of the money from the family. Uh, but when we look at these two paintings, uh, it, it's really remarkable. Again, the one on the left is done uh, 1878. It has his brother Marshall and his cousin either Zoe or Zoe, uh, depending on how you want to say it. But it's a very, very lonely painting uh, in comparison. Uh, again, uh, when we look at this, a lot of this is, is kind of this point uh, with the brother's life, both... Uh, where they, uh, again, are, are just kind of enjoying themselves post uh, uh, the death of their parents. And, and we do get this entire series of kind of leisure paintings. Uh, these are always fun if for no other reason you really do get kind of a glimpse into the past, into what these, these poor people had to wear uh, when they would actually go swimming and things like that. It almost looks like a full uh, suit, if you will, where, you know, today uh, the gentlemen usually just wear a short pair of trunks and that's about it. Uh, but again, all of this is kind of focused around uh, Kaibot's uh, views of leisure, and a lot of the paintings that we get uh, from him are kind of this glimpse into, uh, again, this, this wonderful uh, upper-class lifestyle that these folks must have lived, uh, the, the paddlers, the canoers, if you will. Uh, and again, when we look at this, I think it's interesting because if you look at the, the paddles, uh, they're actually shaped like a leaf. And, and again, if you think about uh, contemporary paddles or oars, uh, it's, it's remarkably changed since then. And again, for me, uh, in addition to the art itself, this is always kind of this enjoyable look into the past. This man looks like he's wearing a pith helmet as he's uh, uh, canoeing along. I'm not sure if that will help him uh, in, in protecting him from water, but nonetheless. Uh, again, when we look at the technique that he's employing, though, uh, we continue to use this kind of basic concept of perspective, uh, but we're also incorporating a lot of the Impressionist techniques. Again, here's another view uh, of kind of the same situation but if we look at the water on the foreground uh, this is a wonderful example of, of kind of how he's using this impressionist technique and again uh, with him being involved in so many of the impressionist shows and being so close uh, with the impressionist is obvious that their style uh, would be incorporated into his work and as we kind of continue along uh, and we reach this this phase of his work we do see a lot of uh, this impressionistic style kind of creeping in where uh, previously this, this there was a greater concept of realism uh, that was kind of employed. Again, when we look at this, uh, we don't see the people's faces, and if we think back to some of his previous paintings, uh, you could absolutely register who the people were. In addition, he started to adopt those flat planes uh, that we associate with Impressionism as well. Uh, but then we go back to the city and we have this entire other uh, perspective of what the same group of people is essentially doing uh, uh, in the city itself. And the wonderful thing about this painting is, of course, you can actually go uh, to Paris and see almost the exact scene. Uh, the, the street has obviously been paved uh, so that cars can go on it and a street light has been added. But uh, the exact angle is there and you can even very much line up the buildings uh, in, in rainy day Paris. Uh, with the architecture that we see. But again, what are we really highlighting here? We're showing this newer architecture, uh, this new uh, uh, renovations that Marin Ausman had, had constructed uh, during the time of Napoleon III. And, and as we kind of moved past uh, uh, the Franco-Prussian War, uh, a lot of this is even being rebuilt again uh, after that time. So again, looking at this, a lot of this is just this kind of contemporary view of this new form of architecture in Paris, these wonderful balcony scenes. And again, uh, very much this view of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the upper class. And again, a reminder that uh, Kaibot isn't interested in, in, in necessarily selling his work. He's painting from a personal view. So we do a lot of things like this. Uh, it's almost autobiographical with him kind of looking off into the distance and, and, and thinking and, and searching for uh, uh, something. Again, this is 1875. So his father probably had just passed on uh, the previous year. 
He's working with the Impressionist, and I imagine, uh, again, figuring out uh, uh, what he's doing. Uh, with a few of these, I've actually been able to track down uh, some of the actual streets as we would see them today. And again, uh, this is an interesting perspective to take on art as well. And this is something we kind of see uh, from Japanese prints. And as we continue uh, to have this this elevated view of, of the painting scene, uh, it becomes more apparent. Again, this is this kind of aerial view, the bird's eye view, where you're literally a bird flying above things, looking down at something uh, uh, and not even necessarily a perfect sense of perspective we haven't quite gotten there yet uh, uh, with Kaibot but nonetheless uh, this is kind of the direction we're going again a lot of this is just the reflections uh, of these wonderful balconies and again a lot of these people are going to be people that are directly uh, related and in close connection with the artist himself Again, this wonderful use of perspective. If we follow uh, this balcony line all the way off into the distance and then we look at the other building, we can imagine the architecture uh, on that right side of the building, actually those lines intersecting far off in the distance. And again, uh, this is also a very easy way to kind of put people in scale with each other. Uh, uh, this wonderful image of just these people looking over the balconies down at the street below, uh, seeing what they might see in the modern uh, a city that is Paris. Another aspect you might notice, uh, especially if you compare this to Edward Manet's kind of similar scenes, similar settings, is uh, we see a lot of backs of people and sides of people. And I don't think that this is a comment on uh, Gustav's ability to paint. I think he's just kind of choosing uh, this, this different angle to, to perceive people. Again, if you think about uh, Manet, Manet would have this frontal view, uh, even when we're looking at the balcony, this impossible view of the viewer uh, floating somewhere beyond the balcony and looking in. Where this, again, uh, it's as if he has set up the, his easel within the room itself and is really uh, just painting almost a snapshot of the scene where, again, we look at this as if this is this brief moment in time, but uh, this being a, a, an oil painting, uh, the artist would have had to spend a significant amount of time constructing this painting. This isn't something uh, that you could do very quickly. Here is this more bird's eye perspective I was speaking of. Again, uh, it's not that we're just looking out. Now we're looking out and we're also looking down. Uh, this is another uh, a thing you'll actually see from other Impressionist artists. Uh, the people I, I'm thinking of is actually uh, Pizarro does this very well. Uh, uh, in, in addition to uh, some of the other artists, Renoir also does this kind of perspective. But the interesting thing about uh, as we kind of look out these windows, and see what's going on uh, all of the different styles that he's kind of embracing uh, as he does this again this is much more impressionistic uh, than the realism that we absolutely saw previously uh, in his in his previous periods of work but even from this point forward uh, a lot of these views kind of move in between the two this one, again, is much more realistic in, in, in uh, temperament, if you will, and it's this wonderful snowy scene uh, where, again, this is almost a personal painting of observation, these cluttered buildings together uh, within the narrow space. And, and again, if you think about uh, these, these wonderful avenues and roads that were uh, uh, opened up in Paris, this is kind of almost an antithesis of this, this very cluttered, uh, snowy view. Maybe he was suffering from a, a little bit of cabin fever at the time, if you will, something along those lines. But uh, again, very much uh, different viewpoints all along the same subject matter. Uh, and, by, and when we do this, when we look at different paintings uh, by the by one artist of, of kind of similar views, then we really do get an appreciation uh, of what they're doing. Again, this is a much later painting on into 1880, and, and we see this definite use of impressionistic uh, technique again uh, as we kind of follow those perspective lines that he hasn't abandoned uh, we almost have this large brown triangle that's formed uh, where the buildings and the darkness from the buildings and, and we imagine the trees kind of all fused together uh, into one shape and, and it almost seems like the city is, is almost folding out of that shape itself uh, forming the architectural movements the columns that you can see there on the left uh, that slowly disappear into this almost smudge that we have uh, on the canvas surface. 
And then over on the far right side, we have some of this beautiful wrought iron uh, uh, railing as well. Uh, this is actually a wonderful view. Uh, actually, quite uh, a little bit, a little bit later on, but not that far later on from where we are of Paris in the same boulevard, and you can kind of uh, get this wonderful view of the architecture that he was actually painting. Uh, again, this is kind of the fun thing about uh, looking at art at this time is that photography has actually progressed quite a bit uh, from its first inception and we start to be able to see things uh, like street scenes and people active in streets and a lot of this has to do uh, simply with the exposure time of the photography and the fact that it is very much advanced uh, from its first inceptions uh, that we see of Paris again those longer exposures you'd never be able to see all these wonderful fine details uh, uh, this gentleman over there on the right uh, is an example the boulevard viewed from above and again you can almost see him like hanging over a balcony looking straight down in almost this uh, uh, haphazard kind of way but again uh, this is what you would actually see if you were up on one of these uh, second story or third story balconies kind of looking down at, at the population itself and again when we think about the perspectives of art uh, in the Western tradition, this is kind of a newer concept. This idea of looking down as a composition uh, is one of the newer concepts we see with the Impressionist. And, and as I have mentioned, uh, you can definitely think of this as being an influence from the Japanese prints uh, that so many of them are enjoying and looking at at this time as well.